Hello singers, I'm really excited to share with you today the eternal chord progression. A chord progression that goes around the circle of fifths without you being able to perceive what the home key is. Check the description below for a free PDF file of this that you can use with your choirs to improve your tuning, to learn chromatic solfege better, and to improve your blend. To begin, I'm going to play the eternal chord progression for you, first with voices, then I'm going to describe what the circle of fifths is, if you're interested, and then following, I will have a recording without voices so that you can practice with it. You may ask yourself, why do I need to know the circle of fifths? Let me try to give you a brief demonstration and explanation why. The circle of fifths is simply a chart that shows what keys correspond with what key signatures. C has zero sharps and zero flats. So does A minor. G has one sharp. So does E minor. When you choose what key you're in, or when you have a piece of music, you determine what key it's in, that becomes one, that becomes do. So this is the one chord, do, re, mi, fa, so, or one, two, three, four, five. This is the five chord, one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E, F, G. This is the four chord, one, two, three, four, C, D, E, F. These corresponding minor keys are also closely related. Most of pop music in our culture is based on chords that are found within this six chord region. They are called closely related chords. If you ever want to modulate from these closely related chords, there are a number of ways to do that, but I'm going to share one that's using something called a tritone. The tritone is an unstable interval. Let me explain quickly. So here is 
do. Below do is t. T wants to go to do because of the half step relationship. If you look on a piano, B to C has no black note in between it. Now, if you go up to Fa, once again, there's a half step that goes down to Mi below. So listen to this interval together, the outer intervals. T Fa wants to resolve to Do Mi. Okay, so that tritone automatically takes any key and adds in some instability that makes the listener wonder where can we go to find stability. So let's look at the circle of fifths again and I'll show you how you can get outside of those six closely related keys. The circle of fifths here, if we base it on C being one, okay, we can move to E, which is the minor third, okay, the third note up, C, D, E. Here is C major. It's closely related key. We're going to move to E minor. Okay, that's the third of C, C, D, E. Now, the tritone is this note out here. Okay, so we're reaching one note from E out to B flat. That is a tritone. Okay, now listen to this when I move to it. So I'm going to do the three notes in progression. Ah, that's refreshing, isn't it? The unstable tritone down to here made us lose our footing just a little bit, but because we landed on a major chord, we say, oh wait, that sounds okay, but where am I now? Okay, this is a good way to disorient your listener. Now, four to one, okay, remember the F to the C is a four to one. This is called a plagal cadence. Okay, so B flat, now moving to F, okay, that's sometimes called the Amen chord. Amen. Okay, that's a common cadence in music. So B flat moves to F. Okay, now F. F is now perceived as the new one. So the closely related keys are these six notes. So now if we do the same thing and move from F to A, it's three. So F, A, okay? Now we're going to reach outside of this section of six. We're gonna reach from A to E flat. Ah, there's another tritone, okay? Now that, moving from four to the new one, B flat, Oh, that sounds like a new home. And the progression can go on for eternity, thus the eternal chord progression. So that pattern moving counterclockwise around the circle of fifths will allow you to sing a progression that you could do indefinitely, never achieving one. Now, let's go ahead and have you listen to this eternal chord progression without voices and sing along. <laughs> 